So Mangwana Capital is the manager of Mangwana Opportunities Fund. And in Mangwana Opportunities Fund, which is independently managed by the pension funds themselves, they are, they are investors, and they, are, they sit on the investment committee. Mangwana Opportunities Fund represents 35 pension funds. So it's a wonderful opportunity for, for Zimbabwean pension funds, who, as you know, have had very limited investment opportunities that could generate, potentially generate hard currency earnings. So if, they, if we are successful here, there will be tremendous uplift in the value of pension funds in Zimbabwe. Or at least those who are invested, the 35 who are invested at this stage. Certainly there are big pension funds, the National Social Security Authority is invested, uh, First Mutual Group is invested, Adverst, Econet Pension Funds, there's a pension, many, many pension funds. I, I don't want to mention them all by name. No, but they, it's a very broad uh, cross-section of pension funds, representing the smallest and the largest. Yes. My expectations are that uh, there are two aspects to this. First is the what we mentioned earlier on that we've just struck an agreement with the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Zimbabwe, which is likely to, which it will be getting a 10% buy-in uh, into the project at, 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 you know, once we have done the appraisal and we have final investment decision stage. So the, the Sovereign Wealth Fund, which is obviously government of Zimbabwe, gets 10%. But over and above that, we, the production share ag agreement envisages that the government of Zimbabwe in total will take at least 55 to 60% of the total value of the project, whether that is in the form of product or in the form of revenues is for the government of Zimbabwe to choose. So but they will be by far the major beneficiaries of whatever we find here. So, which is I think a fair deal. Okay, the investors have taken a risk and they've invested, but the, the resource belongs to Zimbabwe and the benefits must percolate and seep through the entirety of the Zimbabwean economy. This will have a major impact on the budget. This will have a major impact on the foreign currency earning capacity it will be transformative in terms of infrastructure and, and what can go on. There is tremendous downstream opportunities that can be exploited, which I'm sure you're aware of. Yeah. Okay, so this is just the beginning. Zimbabwe has been in economic trouble for more than a decade. But two years ago, there was a ray of hope for the cash-starved nation. The possible discovery of oil and gas in the north of the country on the border with Mozambique. The Energy Minister Winston Chitando said the oil and gas deposits are Africa's largest oil reserves discovered to date. The company behind the discovery is little known outside the industry. Invictus Energy is an Australian-listed oil and gas company, and its only real assets are those in Zimbabwe. Well, the find, if proven commercial, could be a game-changer. Invictus has already signed a 20-year deal to provide 100 million cubic feet of gas to a local power company. Well, from Perth, Australia, via Skype, we're joined by Invictus Energy's managing director and founder, Scott McMillan. Thanks for your time with us today. Um, how much oil and gas deposits do you believe is in the Kabora Basa region? We've had some independent estimates carried out, and uh, based on uh, these, these independent consultants, they've estimated that uh, around about 10 trillion cubic feet and 300 million barrels of condensate uh, could be present in the Kabora Basa Basin. Uh, that's equivalent to around 1.9 billion barrels of oil equivalent. So pretty substantial by global standards and something that we're very excited about. How did you come by this find, however? Because I understand that Mobil, which is now, of course, part of ExxonMobil, did some testing back in the 1990s, and you're using some of their geological studies. That's correct. So Mobil did carry out an extensive campaign in the early 90s in the Greater Zambezi Valley. And uh, the first part in our exploration program was to reevaluate the data that they left behind. And we were able to obtain the original field tapes uh, and seismic surveys that they acquired, reprocess that data and shed new light on the basin and, and its petroleum potential. And uh, now uh, we've concluded those studies and we're going forward with our own uh, exploration program on the ground. And in fact, we've got a team going into um, the country uh, and, and into the basin next week to start some reconnaissance for our uh, infill seismic campaign, which we're planning to start uh, next year following the rainy season. I'm not asking uh, you to speak addition, on behalf of Mobile, uh, of course, but from, from your understanding, uh, why did Mobile decide not to drill at the time? Was it not commercially viable for a company of its size? So Mobile were exploring for big oil targets, uh, and, and this was back in the early 90s. And uh, when they had finished their evaluation of the, of the basin, they concluded that the petroleum uh, system was more likely to be gas prone uh, as opposed to oil prone and uh, 
back then there was no structured market for gas in the region. And in fact, there were already some large existing discoveries in neighboring Mozambique onshore, the, the Pandantamane uh, fields, which were discovered in the uh, early 60s, that uh, were still sitting undeveloped. So Mobile saw very little point in trying to discover even more gas. Uh, fast forward 25 years, however, and the energy dynamics and the gas market in particular has changed dramatically. Uh, there's now a burgeoning uh, both domestic market as well as a regional market. And uh, we see a great opportunity to become not only uh, a significant uh, supplier domestically, but also in the region and particularly South Africa, which is a very large gas market, which is on our doorstep uh, and is facing a supply shortage uh, by the mid 2020s. So is there enough gas then in this fine to make the country energy independent? So if our exploration campaign is successful uh, and, and we discover what we believe is there, then not only will the country have the ability to become energy independent, but also a net energy exporter. And that can be in multiple forms. There's, there's a lot of ways of monetizing gas now. Uh, you've got gas to power, you've got fertilizer, you've got small scale LNG as well as petrochemicals. So all of those can play a mix uh, and, and ensure that uh, Zimbabwe becomes a net energy exporter. And what does this mean for the local economy and particularly for jobs for many of the local people? Well, for a, a, a discovery that is, has this sort of potential in terms of its size, it, it will be uh, an absolute um, huge boost for the economy and uh, as well as jobs that will naturally follow. So, you know, you're talking about thousands of jobs during the construction and development phase uh, directly at, at the project, then in the operations phase, that'll taper down, but then that'll also result in a lot of jobs created in the midstream and the downstream sectors. Uh, and so you're going to have uh, a boost not only to the overall economy and significant contribution to the fiscus, but uh, a lot of jobs created as well. And just for clarity's sake, you're employing local people now, or are you relying on outside expertise to get to the oil and gas? So we've got a mix of, um, in our team, in our, our headquarters in Perth is, is mainly where our, our technical work is undertaken. Uh, sadly, we don't have the expertise in Zimbabwe in, in the oil and gas sector, uh, but we're hoping to develop those skills and, and, and local um, skills as we go uh, and, and as our program advances. Uh, however, in our Harare office, uh, that's entirely staffed by locals. And in fact, our, our country manager there actually ran Mobile's previous exploration program. So he's very well versed and, and will be um, you know, great for the upcoming operations. Uh, and now that we're on the ground and commencing our field activities, our, our presence uh, in country will also start to ramp up as well. So there'll be more local employment too as right. part of the project. Right. Okay. And what about the funding? Are you sufficiently funded or to, to make sure that you can see this project through? So we're funded for our forward uh, field program coming up. And in addition, uh, we're aiming to conclude a partnering program uh, to bring in an additional partner uh, by the end of the year. And then that'll see us funded uh, for the drilling campaign coming up. As for the government of Zimbabwe, do they have a stake in this at all? Will they be relying on, or will they be relying on tax revenue? So at the moment, we're in the midst of finalizing a production sharing agreement with uh, the government, and that will result in the country receiving a, a portion of either the, uh, the product or the profit uh, over and above the, the normal taxes and royalties. So uh, this production sharing agreement will ensure that the country gets a fair share uh, of her resources uh, by implementing this. All right, Scott McMillan, thank you very much for speaking to us from Australia. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. That's our show.